Okay. So today we are reading from Sri Shivi Kusumanjali by Srila Raghunathas Goswami, verse 25. O oh Goddess, when will I make a stripe? of Sindur, Vermilion, on your part, with a jeweled pencil. That will make your hair locks so beautiful. Oh, Goddess! When will I make a stripe of Sindur, Vermilion, on your part, forehead, with a jeweled pencil? That will make your hair look so beautiful. Notes. After he painted wonderful, playful Makari fishes on Sri Radhika's breasts, Sri Raghunath experiences the pain of separation when this vision vanishes from him. Then, when he experiences the flavors of devotional service again, the ocean of his bliss wells up again. In this way, it goes on continuously. Rade, so maybe we can give some little introduction that uh, devotees can share. So first word, here is a goddess. How Raghunath or Tulsi is addressing Shimati Radharani. And when he is saying, oh goddess, he doesn't mean that he looks at Radhika like supreme personality of goddess. No, this is Ashwarya mood. But the mood of Raghunath is completely sweet, Manjari Bhav mood. And when he is addressing Radhika, all goddess, he wants to say, You are the goddess of my heart. You are my sweetest. You are my most beautiful Swamini. And Radhika, is the goddess of Manjari's heart, but also she is the goddess of Mohan's heart, of her beloved or lover. So, so many intimacy is present in this just simple word. And from this word, all oceans of different meanings are just swaying, is developing and developing. And meditation on just this word brings devotion, uh, devotee, sorry, in this ocean. And it's amazing thing when I now listen this, that this ocean is just one word, is all ocean of different emotions. Radhika's emotions, Manjari's emotions, and in a hidden way, there's also emotions of Mohan. So each word of this beautiful Vilapa Kusumanjari is ocean of love, or we can say it's bouquet of flowers, there are different expressions, but these expressions are so nice because we can relish the rasa. 
we should use poetic words for relishing the rasa. And we have chance here to enter in just one flower which Raghunath is offering to Radhika in the form of this nice sublime words. And each syllable, each word of these words is like a lattice, very flavorish, very sweet. So, so many times Gurudev is telling us that we should use this opportunity, very rare opportunity that we have in this lifetime that we can listen this Vilapa Kusumanjo. It's very rare opportunity to listen such a scripture, which is confidential, but in the same time, by the mercy of Gora Bhakta Vinida, it's very openly revealed to us, Kali Yuga Jivas actually. So we should learn how to appreciate this opportunity. And through the bhajan, we can relish something. At least one word. So this is some kind of introduction and Tarun Baba is very eager no, to share no. something. <laughs> She's always pushing. Always me. pushing. No, 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 no. No, no. No, no. Be so, so I, yeah. I, it's true that the address of goddess is never meant in Aishwarya above, but also sometimes the Acharyas hint at the at a different. I mean, this is the perfect explanation, but sometimes the Acharyas also hint. For us sadakas, when he uses the word goddess, he also is saying that all all expansions, all goddesses, all female like Lakshmi and all these expand are all expansions of our Swamini. So all sometimes he also has a little hint that we understand the glories of our beloved Swamini, that she is the phalanx, she is the the origin of all expansions of all the goddesses and even of the, the Kaha Vyuhas, the Manjaris and everything. So she is so sweet, but also we, we on the, it said that Rasa is built on the platform of Tattva, that we understand that the Radhika is also the origin of all there is good. They've always is saying that Ladini Shakti without Ladini Shakti, there is no Bhakti and there is no love. So sometimes the Acharya also hint at this aspect. So that's what came to my mind. Thank you very much, Baba. So this is the sharings of different devotees. So you can see the churning of the nectar. And Raghunath is continuing his to describe his close relationship with Shimata Radharani. Because we should know that now we have opportunity to have association through our hearings, through our ears, to have association with person who is in direct seva with Radharani. And not even direct, it's very close seva. So he is saying, I will take the pencil with jewels to approach you, be very close to your face, to your head, and put the reddish vermilion on your part of your head. It requires a lot of intimacy. intimacy. And we, if we just think, Gurudev this morning was talking about this mental religion. So how to properly use our mind in proper direction. And Raghunath is giving very simple example. Put your mind 
in my seva, what I am doing to my beloved Swami. In that way, you will follow the footsteps of Rupa Nuga. Gurudev, please, you want to share something Beautiful. to help? Is the ocean of all feelings very good? I want to go more to understand, feel it. I never see from this point how they are relishing. Same time, all three. Please explain more. Beautiful. I think in the commentary of our beloved Baba, it will be explained also more. Also, what Gurudev is saying that Swamini is the origin of all feelings we can see. Baba is in one purport. Baba is explaining that the Manjari names even are expressions of, of Radhika, like Rati Manjari is the expression of her love play, Rati Rupa Manjari is the expression of her form, and all Lavanga Manjari is the expression of her, uh, uh, what do you say, shining and luster and, and brilliance. So you can really say, like Prabhupada is saying, that Radini Shakti Swamini, she is the origin of all happiness, of all bliss, and of all these beautiful emotions. So mental religion also means that we have to dive into these emotions, and this we can only do by hearing. We are just talking outside, Kanai and I and Rasheshwara. We were talking that hearing, like Gurudev in the morning, this was so nice, Gurudev. You were spoke, you were speaking so directly to our ping pong mind. So hearing is really the only medicine which is helping in this Kali Yuga. So Shravanam is very important. So it comes before Kirtanam, Shravanam, Kirtanam. So when we don't hear, it is very difficult to make Kirtan. So hearing is so important and we are also thankful, Gurudev. Honestly, this Manubhati, when we are living in Manubhati, is more important to go in Chitavati with this process. Because my mind, mental religion, to mind has to convert in right direction. So, Baba is writing this a mental religion. My mind is making problem in my life. Mind has to flow in manobhati flowing, and mind has to think on that manobhati to bring to the chitavati in ocean of insight. And when we will listen this, all can change. All can change. Mercy can flow and life will change. By listening on, we can change our life. Tattva is ekhane, or goal is also ekhane. Mane tattva is also here, and goal of life is also here. Both are here. Rasa, tattva vichar and rasa vichar, both is yeah, go on. After he painted wonderful, playful makari fishes on Sri Radhika's breasts, 
Sri Raghunath experiences the pain of separation when this vision vanishes from him. This is Chittavrit. Someone who is completely focused in his Chitta, he has this kind of experiences, relishing and feelings of separation when the visions are vanishing. So this is the teaching of, practical teaching of our Acharya, what Gurudev is trying to tell us, how to use properly mind to come in the mood of Chitta Vrit. So someone who is deeply absorbed in his Chitta Vrit, he has experience of pain in separation, out of love, out of love. And then it's natural, when vision vanishes, he experiences the pain of separation. Because he doesn't have anything else in his life. Everything, manovrit, merge in chittavrit. Then, when he experiences the flavors of devotional service again, the ocean of his bliss wells up again. So here, this is also, I mean, every word of, of Baba is exceptional, but here we can see that how can, like Gurdjieff is saying, how can we experience bliss? We were speaking outside at breakfast at 11 o'clock that the material world, it can be very hard sometimes. And here Baba is saying more or less, what is the only way to experience bliss? And he is saying when the devotee experiences flavors of devotional service. That means you can, in this world, it is just a fact we can only become happy by practicing devotional service. That means by being in contact with Ladini Shakti, by practicing Bhakti. There is no other way. We may not be on the level of experiencing this lovely pain and separation. This may come later. But here Baba is clearly saying, without experiencing the flavors of devotional service, we can never experience bliss. And he goes on later, nothing in this world, you will read, because it con can compare to this. And again, when Govinda Priya and I, when we were driving to this Mela, Sadhu Sangha is the only, or oh, when we are here together, like Guru is saying, this is not to be compared to any experience outside in the material world. Every minute you can be together, with the devotees is very, very powerful. And only then can the sadaka experience flavors of devotional service. This is very, very important. You cannot do it alone. Believe me. <laughs> Nothing in this world can compare to that succession of bliss and agony, which is always present in a lively way in the hearts of the Rasika devotees. It is as if the ocean of joy and sorrow is being churned, producing the reviving nectar of union and the concomitant poison of separation. Prema has two sides, nectar and poison. <laughs> and the both of them are pure ananda. Our Rasik Acharyas are teaching us. And for that we need pure chitta vrit. We need pure heart 
Otherwise, it's not possible to relish. Even the nectar we cannot relish. What to say about poison of love? But when we connect our hearts with the hearts of Rasik devotees, then their feelings, their experience of relishing the poison and nectar will come in our heart. They are like uh, Guru Devi said, transformators. How do you call it? Transformers? No. Transmitters. Yeah. yeah. Transmitters. Transmitters. Both. Both, both of them. And yeah. and transmitters. From their heart, from their relishing, we sadakas, we have opportunity to relish at least drop of these real experiences. And in that way, our heart will slowly but surely become purified. We cannot purify our hearts by our own endeavor. We are using mantras, we are using association of devotees, but the only thing we have to open our hearts to those who already have pure hearts. And in this moment, in just this moment, look so many devotees which have pure hearts. Gurudev is here with pure hearts. Anantadas Babaji is here. Our association is, you know, Raghunath is here. And of course, Radhika is also here. So it's the question of consciousness. If we are aware in which kind of association we have opportunity to be, then the process of purifying the hearts will be more and more and more effective. That's my belief. The hearts of the loving devotees are constantly immersed in the ocean of prema and the clashing waves in that ocean sometimes produce the transcendental agony of separation and sometimes the transcendental bliss of meeting here um i'm sorry <laughs> when i sit next to koraka sundara i have i'm very inspired so much so but I love it how Advaita Ji very nicely translated many, many times this word. You know, sometimes you read the devotees do that, the devotees do this, the devotees do that. But here, many, many times in Vilabhakusa Manjali, Prema Bhakti Chandrika, Radharasa Sudhanidhi, it is translated as the loving devotees. Mm -hmm. So I like this very, very much because it says something very deep. It is not only the devotees, but it is the loving devotees. So Baba clear, Baba very specifically mentions this one. I think it's Babuka or I have to check. I have to check the original. Maybe Gurudev can also check. I think it's Babuka, which means loving. That means a devotee who has, who has loving feelings. Gurudev always is making this point. And here Baba is also cementing. This very deep point, you cannot be a devotee if you don't feel love. And you cannot be a loving devotee if you don't have a relationship. So therefore, this, this word, the loving devotee speaks to us that we should fix our stai bhav, our stai in our love. Baba many times is saying this, the loving devotee. So we should try to develop love to our Ishtadev. And this is very easy because we have our Gurudev and Bandumui Savadhana Mate. Very carefully serve your Gurudev and then this loving attitude, it will come out of your heart. Very carefully, not uh, in, a, in a mood of doing this and doing that, but very lovingly. And then we can establish this relationship. And our relationship is that one, the Stai Bhav of Bhavola Sarati as a mantra of Swamini. So I love this 
the loving devotees is such it, it it it's it's not very big but it's very deep the devotees are permanently inundated by these waves and they advance towards their beloved deity in this verse Tulsi applies a line of sindur, reddish powder, that the married girls wear on Srimati's part. It is the service of the embodiment of ecstatic love. Tade. It is the service of the embodiment of ecstatic love. Who can serve embodiment of love? Only someone who is embodiment of devotional service can serve embodiment of love. Shimate Radharani. Because all her qualities are transferred to her Maid servants. We know from Chaitanya Charitamrita that devotees who are worshipping Krishna, in them all Krishna's qualities are manifesting. So can we imagine how all these qualities from Srimata Radharani is manifesting on her maid servants? I cannot imagine. But I like to listen about that. All qualities of Shimati Radharani are manifested in her beloved maidservant, confidential maidservant, not even ordinary maid servant, confidential maidservants. And this is the reason why they are perfect in their devotional service to Shimati Radharani. Because qualities of Shimati, unlimited qualities, are manifested in Rupa, Ragunata. And so on, and so on, and so on, up to our Guru Deus. So, this is important for us sadakas. Why? Because by meditation on their perfect service, their perfect qualities will start to manifest in fortunate souls, little by little. And then Chittavrit will grow and grow and grow and become more mature and more mature. So we are depending on this kind of sadhu sangha. And when we read now, when we read the next paragraphs, we have to understand and to really know that we are sitting here now in Switzerland. You know, but this what we will read now, what Kishori will read now, was never, it was never made public before Mahaprabhu appeared. We never, nobody at that time ever knew how to apply Sindura, how to do these intimate services. It was not said. You know, this, all these poets, Jayadev and all the poets before Mahaprabhu appeared, nobody ever knew about intimacy or, or serving the embodiment of love. So all this is only by the Kripa of Mahaprabhu. This Unadot Rasam, Bhakti Swapakti Shriyam, this was never given. And we are sitting here now and we read how a Manjari is applying like to Radharani's head and to her breast and all these things. It was never made public six, seven hundred years before. So fortunate are we. We can now hear this in the presence of uh, Gurudev and so many beautiful devotees here in this room, this is incredible. Tulasi sits in front of Srimati and puts the stripe of Sindura on her part with deep concentration. Using a jeweled pencil with steady hand. 
That Sindura shines like the morning red in the deep dark night of Sri Radhika's hair. Gurudev, do you want, please, we beg you to explain us more about the meaning of this reddish Sindura? I want to listen from you. <laughs> so what we should explain oh Kesha Baba is here also double music <laughs> <laughs> Therefore, close. No, no. Not because of. Okay. Okay. The very Bear. And very deep. I hope he says mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. I know a little bit, but Gurudev knows very, very much about this in the world. I just think we are blessed that we have the Asha now of our dear Keshav Baba, who's coming also as a very confidential Darcy. And now the servant of Srimati Radhika together in service with our dear Gurudev in Mongya Rajmandir. So we can never over Estimate. overestimate or over and you know, oversee the, the mm -hmm. signs that are happening in Vrindavan. Just now. So just now we're having also these blessings. And uh, it's so sweet when Gurudev says, I want to hear from you. That means also he's getting inspirations when we are sharing. He doesn't want to be only the one who's sharing and giving all the food, but he wants us also to go inside in our meditations and come closer to Swamini. <laughs> so the Sindura... Only what I can can feel that is the, um, a sign of deep passion. It is the sign of deep uh, closeness to Swamini to put that sign here. Because like Gurudev says a lot of times, why we meditate about these services that are done also to like the lips of Swamini and the we hold the chin of Swamini means we are very close. We are coming close to her face. We see her eyes and she sees us. So that Sindura is the part here in the black, you know, hair of Swamini. There is this red stripe that usually in Indian culture will show also that a woman belongs to a husband. So she Mati Radhika and her passion, her feelings, and her Madanakya Mahabhav, these deepest feelings of erotic flavors of the ocean of her heart belong to Mohan. And the maidservant is doing this. And while she is doing it, also always so many memories come to Swamini. And the maidservant, in this case, Rati Manjari. She is the embodiment of Rati, of Swamini's Rati, of Swamini's attachment to Mohan. So she is also doing it with a certain meditation, remembering when Ma uh, Mohan and Swamini meet in the middle of the night, in the different, different occasions after they have been separated. And then this Rati, 
this Rati Manjari who is already full of this eagerness to serve Swamini in the best way. She is putting that red sindura there to make also Swamini more eager again, to increase her eagerness to meet her Mohan and make him happy with her eagerness. That is uh, a circle of love uh, that we are all called into. And for that, we have to forget our own eagernesses for other things. The eagerness to identify, like we hear, with the mind and with the external circumstances. But the eagerness to come into that service of the passion of Srimati Radhika's feelings for her beloved and the eagerness to serve my own Guru Manjari, who is also serving her Guru Manjari, who is serving their Guru Manjari, up to Srimati Radhika to serve her Anurag, like Tarun Baba said. Also, the red, the red line, which is part. What is the red line parting? So, why is it red? Like Suniti wonderfully said, you know, this is the, the passion. The Anuraga means ever increasing love for Mohan, and you can also see that the the red stripe is in the middle of what is in the middle of black so all around this red stripe is black so that means radhika's thoughts sometimes are is said that their locks her locks are coming out of her head are the loving thoughts of the lord so that means her passion the red passion which is fiery red is is uh, is immersed and umgeben von um, surrounded by black that means her thoughts are surrounded, her passion is surrounded by the Lord only. He, everywhere she sees Mohanji. And it reminds me on a Sura Tarangini. Strong Ganges of passion, which is going to meet the ocean. So this black hair of radhika is like a krishna mm. all around mm. her inside her mm. like both of you were saying about her strong emotions but when the passion increase and decrease and in the stage of madana came up above this kind of vermilion passion reddish passion is cutting krishna no one can cut him what does it mean to cut him? To yes, to conquer him. <laughs> he, she is conquering him, both sides of him. She is conquering and showing him how her suratarangini, strong current river yeah. of the passion, is just going, you know without any obstacles to meet with him and divided him my dear sorry you are mine and i can do with you whatever i want <laughs> this is my passion and he cannot resist <laughs> and he is ananda <laughs> That cinder shines like the morning red in the deep, dark night of Radhika's hair. Tulasi is amazed to see that beauty and says, Devi, when will that cinder that I apply now with the jeweled pencil beautify Krishna's curly locks also. <laughs> it may stick on his hair during some special love pastime that you play. Your Sindur, your Anurag, 
will come in his heart and he will become more eager to relish your love. He will become more passionate. He is passionate to enjoy. But when he receives your love, his passion to relish your love is even more intensified. This can only happen. This, uh, you know, this can only happen when he he's making, Baba is making a hint. This is very intimate now, of course, maybe a little bit too intimate, but uh, this only can happen that the Sindur of Swamini is uh, transferred to the locks and the hair of Krishna is only happening when there is this reverse love play, when Radhika is taking the role of the, uh, how can you say of the uh, uh, aggressor the and Krishna the male the domain the dominating one and Krishna is the one who is dominated. So this is a very very deep, very very deep subject matter. In very parakya mood, yes. written in codes yes. that we have to meditate, and the different things will start to appear and appear in the heart of the loving devotee. At that time, it may seem that the work I am doing now will be ruined. But if this happens during your love pastimes, it is actually making my endeavors of making Krishna attracted to you a complete success. This decoration is not made for you, nor for me. Only Shama is qualified to enjoy it. You know, the science of selfish seva, and Manjari knows exactly the mood of Radharani. She wants to serve Krishna without any self selfish desire so in the same mood manjari is serving radhika it's not for you it's not even for me to see how you are beautiful is for him he is only qualified and able to relish and enjoy this beauty of this vermilion in the part of your head. So we, what we should learn that how to think like a manjari, how to feel like a manjari, how to serve like a manjari, we can just be infused by their love. We cannot Think like a manjari by our own. We cannot think, feel like a manjari, Radhika's maid servant, by our own. We should receive it. We should be infused with that. And because our Dehanu manjari is sitting here, I have to think of the story when uh, Sita Devi was making her Sindhu, right? Can you tell the story? That was also so sweet. And it showed the feeling of, you know, Hanuman. Your dad can tell the story. No, you, you. He wants to listen. He has so many things. There she is. So, I'm just telling a story that I also heard from someone else and reading as well. So after Sita was rescued by Ram and the whole Vonar army, including also Sugriva and, of course, by Lakshman, they came home to Ayodhya, and it was a wonderful homecoming. Ram was going to be crowned king, even Bharat. He wanted that so much. And gifts were given all over. Everyone was receiving gifts. Because that's what they do for a big homecoming. Everyone is giving, giving, giving. So, Anuman was sitting 
somewhere in the corner and Sita noticed, oh, Hanuman has not been given a gift. So Sita immediately, she took off her wonderful pearl necklace and she said, Hanuman, come, come. And so Hanuman came, he bowed and she put the necklace on top around his neck. And the people, the people in the assembly were astounded. First of all, a monkey is not very auspicious, but they don't know Hanuman yet. So they're thinking, oh, this monkey, he must be very special, very special devotee because Mother Sita is, is giving him such a valuable present. And so Hanuman, he, he took the necklace around his neck and he took, he was looking at one pearl and everyone was watching this. And so he looked at the pearl and then he bit the pearl. He broke the pearl. And he's still looking inside the broken piece. He throws it away. No, he takes another one and he breaks it again. He's looking inside, throws it away. And the people were watching and they became in uh, almost insulted for Mother Sita. How can this be? He, she gave him such a beautiful present and now he's destroying it. He's contaminating it. He's ruining it. And, Han and uh, Hanuman was just continuing. He was continuing. And then Ram said, Hanuman, yes, my Lord. <laughs> the, the people are having some doubt about you. <laughs> Hanuman is very innocent. It's a child, a childlike innocence. Doubt about me? Why? I am not doing. Yes, because they're thinking what you're doing. They're thinking maybe you don't value Mother Sita and, and me so much. That's what they're thinking. <gasps> and Hanuman was shocked and he wants to correct the fact that's not true says, okay, well, then maybe you should show them how much you care for Mother Sita and myself. And so Hanuman, still the broken necklace is around his neck, still hanging. And Hanuman takes very sharp claw. He can, he can grow his claws like he wants, but he takes and he opens the chest. And inside, the people could see inside, there was Hanuman next to Lord Ram, but inside the chest, there was also Sita and Ram. But Hanuman, next to Lord Ram and Sita and Ram, in the chest, he was opening his chest. And inside this chest, there was Sita and Ram. And next to him, there was Hanuman. And then Hanuman was opening his chest again. <laughs> so in this way, the people of Ayodhya were able to see the unlimited unlimited love that Hanuman has for his Sita Ram. It's kind of like the effect, I think it, we explained one time, it's like putting two mirrors together. It goes forever. You cannot see, there's no end. It's always reflecting and, and growing more, more, more. So this is Hanuman's love. And why, did why did he broke the, why did he broke the necklace? Yeah, the oh, I told the wrong story? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> but why did he break the necklace? Why did he break the necklace? He was checking that Ram is inside. Yes, yes. He okay. wants to see. Oh, I told the wrong story. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. It's okay. So he opened he opened the pearls to see if Ram is inside, and then this and he answer. is not finding Ram and Sita yeah. inside, so he throws them away. And for him, it's logical. It's no this, value. It's no value. Not yeah. not worth point. nothing. Very important point. Wow. Without my Sita Ram, it's nothing. Wow. So so after after Hanuman was feeling hungry, so he thought, if I go to Mother Sita's quarters, I always get something to eat. She knows me. She knows my heart. So he went there and Mother Sita was putting just, she was putting the sindur on like this. Yes. And Hanuman was, <laughs> what? What are you doing? He was a little confused. I said, oh, yes, I'm putting sindur. But why? Why you do this? He says, yes, because Ram, he will 
always be blessed and Ram will have wonderful life and he will never suffer in any way. And for this, I'm doing really, really just this little bit. Ram has so much. So he was hungry and she told him, you have to wait till I'm finished. So when she finished, she looked around to find Hanuman to give him some food. Hanuman was no, no, wasn't there. So she sent the Dasi, go look for Hanuman. <laughs> and Dasi also couldn't find Hanuman. And all of a sudden there was this figure, big figure, looking like a monkey with a big tail. But it was all red. It was all red. And Sita at first was a little bit scared. Who are you? Uh, it's me. I am Hanuman. What? Hanuman, what did you do? Yes, you put such a little bit on the oh. top and, Han and Ram gets so many blessings. So now I want to make sure Ram always has blessing. <laughs> this was story? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Always oh, nice to hear you. Yeah. Please. It sounds nicer. Though. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Blessed is that maid servant who can. Rade, Rade, qué lindo pasatiempo de Hanuman. Nunca había escuchado nada de Hanuman. <laughs> what a beautiful, what a beautiful. Hanuman. I never heard any stories of Hanuman before. <laughs> you should come next Tuesday. You can make a post. Yeah. It's Tuesday, nine o'clock European time. Yeah. Yes. Ramkata. Oh, okay. On I will write. Start. I will write. You share the link or something? You share the link or something? Yes. So last last week was the first one. It was uh, we're just now starting. This is a request from Gurudev. So I take very serious. <laughs> Blessed. Is that maid servant who can make Shama mad after Swamini? Swamini independently experiences how Shama alone is qualified to see her clothing and no one else. That's why one day she told her girlfriends in Rasodgara. He told me what's on his heart and he touched me again. He was trapped in the noose of love. Night and day he was thinking of me and crying his life airs out. Although he keeps his chest on my breasts and his face on my face and he constantly looks at me, he still feels as if he lost me. Tearing hope open his chest. <laughs> he wants to keep me in his heart. <laughs> it was the right story. <laughs> <laughs> he does not wear his favorite necklace around his neck. <laughs> <laughs> Nor does he anoint his body with sandal paste anymore. With great effort, he attained a jewel. 
but he does not know where to keep it. He single-handedly makes bitter leaves with camphor and fills my mouth with them. He laughs and smiles and holds my chin as he takes the pawn out of my mouth with his mouth. He dresses me, bathes me, and ornaments me, and ecstatically takes me on his lap. He takes a lamp in his hand to look at my face as tears trickle from his eyes. Holding my feet, he anoints them with foot leg. And he binds my disheveled hair into a braid. And Balaram Das meditates on this pastime. As Balaram Das meditates on this pastime, the song ends. So Manjari's devotees who are in the mood of Radharani's maid servant will always meditate on Krishna like this. That he is the servant, loving servant of Srimati Radharani. And this is beloved Krishna for Manjaris, because she is be he is beloved of Radharani. And this, is, this kind of Krishna is very dear to devotees who are in Manjari Bhav. And they want to please him, because by pleasing him they know that he will please Radhika, and also Radhika will be pleased with him. Manjaris will enhance their mutual love. But the most important thing is how to meditate on Krishna. It's very clearly written here. Like her beloved, in one sense, servant. And Krishna also wanted to completely relish this service to Shimati Radhika, not only in Nivriti Nikunja, which is described here, but also in appearance of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He wanted to relish more and more different levels of Manjari Bhav, because he knew in that way, finally, I can become Radha Sevika. It's written in Chaitanya Charitamrita. Everyone is worshipping me. Everyone is demanding something from me and uh, calling me different names. But no one is there to call me Radha Sevika. And we can see here that only Radhika's maid servants can call him Rad Radha Sevika and he is the most pleased. So this is the mood of Manjari Bhava Sadhana also, but also this is the mood of perfect maidservants of Manjari. Which kind of approach we should have towards the Krishna? Like Hanuman has specific approach to Ram and Sita, and everyone who wants to learn and to approach Ram and Sita should learn through him and from him. So in the same thing, we should learn here whose Krishna we want to serve, which Krishna we want to serve, and how to serve. Radha's Krishna. Through feelings of Radharani and through feelings of Radharani's maidservants.
Tulasi awakens all these sweet memories within Swamini's mind while marking her part with a line of Sindhur. Now, expert Tulasi holds a big mirror before Bhava Mai, all emotional Radhika, and says, Just see how I've decorated you. I have dressed you, but now I want to see my work spoiled. By Sham. Swamini is startled when she sees her own form in the mirror. Proudly she thinks, If even my undecorated body makes Shama mad, what then to speak of this fully decorated body? How long before I can make my hero enjoy this sweet form of mine. When can I make him happy with this limitless youthful beauty that knows no match in all the three worlds? So we, we are dressing ourselves. We are trying to to look much nicer and when we come in front of the mirror we try to correct our hair our jewels our dressings you know i said now i'm satisfied with myself you know i look so good <laughs> so nice i'm very very lovely and pretty you know and everyone will appreciate me but this is not the case with Shimata Radharani. When she sees herself, she is very convinced that because she looks so nice, that she will be more, even more attractive to Krishna. Because he is already attractive with her, without any clothes. But if she has cl clothes, ornaments, nice bread, he will be more and more attracted. So this is his, her, sorry, her attention to give him a pleasure. And intention of Manjar is, is <laughs> to make a dress to her like this. But also the perfection of their seva is that Krishna is spoiled of these things. This is the perfection of Manjari seva. To madden him. To madden him. And that he, in full passion, which he receives from Radhika, destroy all her garments, garlands, ornaments, hair, sindura, and everything. So this is our song. Very beautiful. Very beautiful, you know. Nothing more. Such beautiful thoughts are even desired by the Lord. During a particular pastime, he sees his own reflection in Srimati Radharani's breasts. Gurudev, how can Mohan see his reflection in Srimati Radharani's breasts? Nipples of Radhika is a dark. Any breast nipples are dark because it is nice to think there. Softness, the nature of the feeling is softness, that is the breast. But the, 
the breast nipples are always dark so this why dark because krishna in this softness krishna is relishing that is the nipples of the breast nobody can talk about the breast and nobody can see the breast only the babies can see the breast and talk about breast and we are sitting in the classes spiritual classes talking about the breast is surprising because this is the breast of the radhika which is a very soft and only babies can see so we are manjaris we can see the breast of radhika we are the baby of radhika we are the shadow of mother this shadow what cannot live without original and my original is radhika my mama is radhika so manjari she is the mother basadia and for krishna he is a kanji she is a kanjugal lover only lover can see the breast a child can see the breast no third person can see the breast mother so open the breast for the child she not need to open but lover has to open the breast this is the beauty of the lover when he open the breast then he is a lover do you see the change difference of them krishna has to open the breast but the baby is manjari's mother open the breast and they see and paint it do what you like to do this is basadia of the manjari with the radhika so in and the without, was written sorry without mother without breast feeding of mother we cannot grow similarly without the mercy of radhika our spiritual life rag bhakti cannot grow so she feed the breast for rag bhakti divine love pure love what is given by rupa ragunath that only can come where we want to be a manjari of radhika baby of radhika we don't want to see one baby cannot see out of mother even he don't recognize his father till 10 years breastfeeding time she only no mother this is the beauty of the child so we want to be breastfeeding babies is a manjari she is so close to her mama no one can happen any place she is sitting and mom she will feel my baby is hungry she will open it she not bother that other will see her breast so much love for baby this is the radhika and his manjaris how she is tied with manjari you cannot imagine manjari say i am shadow of you i am your baby i don't know i have no qualification only by breastfeeding of you can change my life you make so close to, you, to yourself that automatic my life will change you love it change my life i have no qualification my qualification of ritual injunctions 
This is the blockage to bring here. That's it only. Chaitanya Chaitamrit Adilila Pur Kanto start with the foolish child. Foolish and child can understand Brajendra Nandan. We are not foolish, we are very knowledgeable. That is the problem. And we are not a, like a baby. See the Bible. He said, when I was a child, I am seeing you face to face. I grown up with my material identification. I cannot see you. I lose my child. <laughs> <coughs> Nature, this is my problem. Same mother, when the child grown up and you come to mother and say, I want to see your breast, he will say, What? You very grown up now, baby. I don't wish, I'm not going to see or show you. Only child has a qualification. And if I am foolish, mother take more care of me. Because he is very child, he is small baby. Rather. Takes time to understand because we grown up. We are child, easy to understand. We will give do kaka and pee. What is the problem? I don't know that where to do it because I am a child. And mother clean. We bring all dirtiness to her, and she make us again fresh and happy, and go play. This is the nature of the mama. This is the nature of the Radhika. Manjiri is going with Radhika in Avishar, meeting to Krishna, muddy road. Radhika is walking fast. She want to run back backside. She slipped two, three times. Her clothes was very dirty. Radhika said, go and change the clothes. Manji said, no, I will not leave you. I will not leave you. My clothes is not important. I will, I will always fall down in my, by my mistakes, but I will not leave you. I will leave you, my distance will finish. Which condition I am, I will go with you. Who can take care like this? Only Mama. My Swami Radhika, we never leave her. In any condition, we fall down, we are good or bad, I will not leave you. All circumstances, I will follow you. Radhika, Dasis are never fall down. Because of that, they will fall down again. They will be ready to walk and follow, follow her son, Niradika. This is Mandalis. They no care for the clothes. They care for the service. Also, 
So wonderful, Gurudev. Thank you so much. Beautiful. Um, also the reflection. Krishna can see the reflection in Swamini's breast because it is said that Radhika's effulgence is uh, gold molten hundreds of thousands of times. So it's like pure shining gold. So when you take a silver spoon, a teaspoon or a tablespoon, sometimes you can see your reflection in a, in a silver spoon, you know. So how to ex what do you expect? Radhika's effulgence is gold molten hundreds of thousands of times. So, of course, Krishna can see his reflection in the, in the breast of Swamini because of the purity and the, and the, and the shining and the effulgence. So, this is also a point to be considered because when you can see yourself in a simple material <laughs> a tablespoon, 100% you can see yourself so reflected in the breast of Swamini. Because it's so so pure. Mm -hmm. Go on. He sees his own reflection in Srimati Radharani's breast, and with with an enchanted heart, he says, as written in Radharasa Sudaniti. May Sri Radha protect us as she smiles when she hears Hari, who sees his own reflection in her sh golden shining breasts, telling her, there are two beautiful boys visible on your breasts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> One on each. <laughs> <laughs> Their luster steals the glories of blue lotus flowers, and they completely enchanted me. Make me your sucky, so that these two boys can tightly embrace us young girls. Swamini reacts by saying, Shama, you are the young transcendental Cupid himself. Is the desire to enjoy your own sweetness so strong? And she thinks to herself, how beautiful I am. It would all be wasted if beautiful Shama couldn't relish it. Here we can see that even Krishna wants to relish Manjari buff. You see that when he, when he is seeing these two boys, he wants to embrace them as young girls. So he, like Mahaprabhu, also Krishna sometimes is so overflown with this Madanakya Mahabhav that he himself wants to feel that Tadatmika, this very, very close of the mantra is in his own heart. Krishna's happiness is Radharani's happiness. She dresses herself with the strong desire to make Krishna relish it. The address Devi simply touches the heart. Unfor Unfortunately, I am unable to speak with her. Why don't I desire to speak with her, to whom I was introduced long ago by my spiritual master? Although I have a desire to speak with people that I'm just newly acquainted with. What kind of a devotee am I if I don't get any response from her? Although I'm repeating the words of the Goswamis. Surely, if I would purely repeat and practice the words of the Acharyas, she would respond. So Gurudev gave us the answer to this point. Why? Why is Swamini not responding? Because our mind 
is too much into the uh, unreal world and not into the spiritual world. And in this morning, Gurude was explaining uh, importance of such kind of melas. And also, mela is when devotees are together in Zoom, but when they have direct relationship, this is opportunity to share, to share the feelings, to share the realizations, and this is the meaning of mela. The meaning of mela is not fun in the sense of only fun. The meaning of mela is not just to talk different subjects, but the real meaning of mela is to nourish our desirable bhava by listening, by sharing also. So we should be aware of it when we are together in such a number of nice devotees because Baba here is saying unfortunately I am unable to speak with her because I like to speak about so many other things and the more people are around me I'm more enthusiastic to speak about other things but okay. Baba is saying here no no, this is a wrong consciousness. You should correct your consciousness. And these kind of gatherings, these kind of melas, are actually prem melas to increase our subtle balas which appear in our heart. Otherwise, it will be very good party. And it's very bad to drive 10 hours you know for just party but we have to use this time to nourish our heart in the form of chitavrit to to fix really what we really want and pray together to attain it also there is this very very beautiful word Baba is saying in this uh, citation of that, uh, you know, elaboration, um, to whom I was introduced long ago by my Gurudev. So here we can see again, again and again and again, the importance of Sri Gurudev, who, who is the, the, the middleman, you can say, and who, without Guru Kripa, we cannot even think about uh, speaking to Radhika because we have to be introduced and Gurudev, Guru Manjari, in that case, of course, will bring us to Rupa Manjari, and Rupa Manjari will do then the perfect deal with Swamini. So, again and again, we cannot stress enough the point of the importance of Gurudev slash Guru Manjari. Both are very, in his form in both, are very, very important. The Goswami's descriptions of the qualities, names and pastimes of the divine pair will ultimately awaken eagerness in the devotee's heart. And the devotee's eager calls will pull the bearer of the holy name towards him. When I call my worldly, worldly friends, they respond. But you are dearer to me than millions of lives. Why don't you respond to them? Such aspirations should awaken within the heart of the eager devotee. Eagerness is the very life of bhajan and without eagerness bhajan is lifeless eagerness means attachment so bhajan with attachment is a bhajan it's not mechanical it's not automatical it's lifeless So, 
when we say I am eager, we should look in our hearts to see really how I am attached to Swamini. Because through the attachment, eagerness will come, and through eagerness, attachment will come. And in that way, Bhajan will be more stronger and stronger and stronger. And it not will become lifeless. And Taru Baba is very eager <laughs> now to this, and attach. This this one, this 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 line is so beautiful. The, the Goswami's description of the qualities, names, and so on and so on. So we can see and we can be eternally thankful. You can just imagine. I mean, we have so many things to do nowadays, but the Goswamis, they only did one thing. They only lived for our benefit. They sat down under a tree and they wrote thousands, literally thousands of pages on rinds, on, on barks of the trees. And without these descriptions, Baba always said only the literature of the Goswamis are important. The Goswamini's descriptions of the qualities, names and pastimes. So what Gurudev is always saying, Vilaba Kusumanjali, Radha Rasa Sudhanidhi, are only there to do one thing. Srila Rupa Goswami in Nectar Dahingaba Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, he says, when the Sadaka hears of about the pastimes of Radha and Krishna, eagerness will appear in his her heart. And that's the point where he will be qualified for Raga Nuga Bhakti Sadhana. So that means hearing is so essential. And we should hear, at least I try to do it whenever I pick up a book, that these books have been, it's, it's just mercy in paper form. They sat down and they wrote down all these pastimes, Raghunathas Goswami, Rupa Goswami, Sanatan, all of the Goswamis, they wrote these things down to awaken our own eagerness. How absolutely fantastic is this? And then you also can see that these persons have been visionaries. They have been seers of the future. They knew and they were so selfless. They knew they only, like Gurudev said this morning, this body will come and go. They will go out of Rupa Goswami Sadaka Deha. He will go out and go back, but it will be always here on earth for sadhakas to follow this is the ultimate point of selflessness they have nothing to gain they never sold any book they just wrote it down for the benefit you can say of mankind of those fortunate souls like us right now who sit here and listen to these wonderful pastimes so this is always what inspires me that we can have this now and can read these things and we have the evidence that it will do something with our own heart. It will awaken the desire to practice Raga Nuga Sadhana Bhakti. This is marvelous. They are loud speakers for our ears. The Lord also wants the devotees Pajan to be filled with eagerness. In Srimad Bhagavata, the Lord told Devarsi Narada, Just to increase your eagerness for me, I disappeared after once revealing myself to you. I play these tricks on you just to make all of your senses absorbed in me. I, just, I also wanted to say I'm very sorry if I talk too much but this also again baba is quoting the srimad bhagavatam which is the essence of all vedic scriptures and what just popped up into my mind these days and now again how how wonderful and how intelligent Srila ac bhaktivedanta prabhupada our beloved Srila prabhupada how fantastic and how intelligent he was because he knew that fact every morning I remember we were sitting down at 7.30 maybe, right? And sitting down and re-listening to, to the Srimad Bhagavatam. And Prabhupada exactly knew why he was doing that. Because 
in the first two verses or three verses of the Srimad Bhagavatam, it is said, this scripture, Bhagavatam is, first of all, not different from the Lord. And this scripture alone has the power to capture Krishna in our hearts. So I was just reminded of how excellent Prabhupada's idea was that everyone who came to a temple had the opportunity to listen to Srimad Bhagavatam with the promise of Vedavyas himself, Krishna, as a writer, that when you hear this literature, Srimad Bhagavatam, it will make Krishna appear in your heart. Without the Srimad Bhagavatam, there is no Raganuga Bhakti, not possible. All the commentaries of all the Acharyas, Jiva Goswami, Rupa Goswami, all are based, Chaitanya Charitamrita is completely based on the Tattva and the Rasa of Srimad Bhagavatam, especially 10th Kando. The, all the Rasa we hear about now is there also in the 10th Kando. So this is just popped into my mind as a glorification of Srila Prabhupada, who, who mercifully brought to the West this beautiful, beautiful book. <laughs> Srila Raghunath Das Goswami, the embodiment of eager devotion, carries a strong desire for devotional service in his heart. When he addresses Sri Radha with the word Devi, Krishna Krida Pujara Vasati Nagari. She is the empress, empress of the town of Krishna's worship. When will I see Shama's curly locks become reddened by the Sindur? that I apply to your part. Why wouldn't this ornamentation, Shringar, become filled with Shringar Ras, the flavors of Eros? The Nayaka hero is Sringaras personified? The Nayika is Mahabhav personified. And the bodies of the maidservants are made of Seva Ras, the flavor of devotional service. The verbal root div means play. You should play in such a way that the line of sindur that I made on your part will be spoiled. These are three kinds of shringar play. One. One in which Krishna leads and Swamini assists. Two. One in which Swamini leads and Krishna assists. And three. One in which both are leading. Rasa itself will decor decorate you. May I see this after your pastimes? Swamini becomes overwhelmed when she hears the moving words of the maidservant. How can Swamini be decorated by rasa, spiritual flavor? By her crushed flower garland, 
her half-opened braid, her broken necklaces, her loosened dress and ornaments, her inwardly exhausted, blooming and rolling eyes, and her externally softly crying yet sweetly smiling face. Shri Krishna himself, who is transcendental, blissful flavor personified, Rasanam Rasatama. He is the greatest flavor of all flavors. And who the devotees want to experience in the innermost core of their hearts loses himself in beholding that beauty. A loving poet has written about Krishna's experiences. Chaitanya Charitamrita Adi Lila 4 Seeing the sweetness of her limbs after our blissful pastimes, I forget myself in happiness. Can there be any doubt that the devotees who are surrendered to Sri Radha and who are absorbed in Manjari Bhav are floating endlessly on the waves of Rasa? The lives of such devotees are thoroughly pervaded by the highest experience of rasa. This is proven by the books written by sensitive rasika saints. This material world is the playground of God's endlessly variegated pastimes. And there are innumerable creatures there with innumerable different feelings. Some feel like a karmi, a fruitive worker. Some like a yogi, mystic. Some like a jnani, wise man. Some like a bhakta. Devotee of a personal God. And there are so many other feelings in which people wander over the earth. But beyond all these classes of people, there are those who have been ornamenting the earth since time immemorial, by carrying a particular kind of extraordinary, extraordinary feeling. And these people are known as Rasikas. Rasa is the very heart of the Lord. And therefore, it is endless, complete, and not limited by time, place, or circumstances. It is universal and self-manifest and finds its culmination in Krishna's pastimes in Braja and most particularly in Shri Shri Radha Mohan's Nikunja Lila Rasa. The Acharyas relished this personally and recorded their experiences in their books out 
of their endless mercy on the practicing devotees of this material world. How many sweet things Tulasi is saying to Swamini while she puts the sindur in her part. Suddenly, the vision vanishes and Sri Ragunat weeps. I will make a line of cinder on your part with a jeweled pencil. Will this nicely applied cinder greatly enhance the beauty of your locks? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I think it's time mm -hmm. to stop and start to digest like a cows. <laughs> cows are eating, 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 and then they are not swallowing. They start to digest. And then slowly the food is running dropping in their different uh, stomachs different stomach yeah. yes in a, in a row yeah. hmm. so what to say thank you very much radhe 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 radhe